Today I am bringing you five easy and delicious freezer meals for you and your family. And I'm very excited to put these together today because I am going out of town. So I need to give Dave something to feed my family that's not tacos, burritos, and then a burrito taco, and then a taco burrito, the whole time that I'm gone. I love being able to create delicious and fast meals uh, for Dave to handle all the shenanigans while I go and play on my own time. All the recipes will be down below. And without further ado, let's get cooking. This dish is a chicken Alfredo with a taco twist. So while my pasta is cooking, we'll mix up the sauce in our pan right here. The first thing we're gonna do is pour in two jars of your favorite Alfredo sauce. I'm not a huge fan of jarred Alfredo, but the Classico, I, like okay. I always think homemade is better, but on busy nights, sometimes speed is of the essence. Next up is three quarters of a cup to one cup of grated Parmesan cheese. I'm just using the cheap, like craft shaky cheese. You could use nicer cheese if you want. I will pour in just a splash of milk to loosen it up a hair, because I am adding pasta and I want the pasta to kind of soak this up a bit. One cup of your favorite salsa and about a tablespoon of your favorite taco seasoning. I will eyeball this, but it's about a tablespoon. Give this a stir until it's all combined. Make sure you dump it on the counter. That's essential. My pasta is almost done, but before I pour that in, I have about three cups of cooked chicken. You could use a rotisserie chicken. That would be very easy. The chicken Alfredo pasta freezer meal ended up being the perfect thing to take to my neighbor. Sometimes when I make a bunch of freezer meals and stuff, it's a good opportunity to make some extra and hand it out to your neighbors so they can have an easy dinner or they can have a freezer meal for whenever they have a tight schedule, they can't make dinner that day or whatever's going on. So I gave that meal to my neighbor who was super excited to have it and then texted me later, said, what is the recipe? It is fabulous. My whole family devoured it. I'm going to give that one two thumbs up, highly rated by kids. And yes, I did share the recipe. It's so easy. It's one of my favorite things about it. Easy, delicious, kids love it. We are going to do a Korean inspired ground beef and rice freezer meal. Uh, my ground beef here is a touch frozen still. So this is going to take a while. I have about a uh, not quite two pounds, maybe a pound and a half of ground beef here. So while this is browning, I'm gonna mix up my sauce and this will come to, like cooking this beef is gonna be the longest part of the entire prep. This is one of my family's favorite meals and I'm really happy that this is going to be ready for them while I am out of town. The sauce for our Korean beef, sorry about the sizzling in the background. In a smallish bowl, I have a half a cup of soy sauce. You could also use coconut aminos if you have allergies or something, a half a cup of brown sugar, a squeeze or so of ginger. You can use fresh ginger, you can use ground ginger. I have this puree that I really like because it's so easy and I love the flavor of ginger. So I'm gonna go about a tablespoon of that. Crushed red pepper flakes are next and you can do this according to your spice preference. I happen to love it. So I'm doing a nice big pinch. Sesame oil is coming up next. I love sesame oil. Two teaspoons of this. I do wanna measure that because this stuff is strong. Whisk. And a little bonus thing, just because I wanna get out of my spice cabinet. I have some black and white sesame seeds, so I'm also going to just pour those in just because I have them. This one's not necessary, but it is fun. Here is my sauce. So now we're just waiting for our ground beef to finish. A little frozen still, but some of it's come off. So now I will add some garlic. This stuff in a jar just makes this wildly easy. So maybe a tablespoon or two of garlic. We love garlic in my house. So um, if I go a little heavy on that, no one will have a problem with it. Just finished up the ground beef. So in comes our sauce and that's it <laughs> we're gonna put it in a freezer proof uh container and then i'll show you how we serve it i just want to make sure i get every last drop of that goodness right there yes oh my gosh it's so delicious i have these like, restaurant grade containers that i love to freeze things in so i'm hoping that this will all fit in here and also that i do not make a complete mess Oh, fingers crossed. Oh, okay, I might need to pause, hang on. 
I'm still dripping on the counter. I need everyone to know that Christine has been here making stuff. Obviously, a Ziploc baggie would work maybe better than this. <laughs> there we go. I got it. Hey, George, she's got it. Okay, here's my lid. Korean beef just heated up. Okay, that goes on top. Now, there's several options for serving. So you can do regular rice. I have these spicy Korean rice packets. So this is what I'm gonna leave for Dave because this is like microwave, microwave, dinner's ready. You could also do ramen noodle like this, a uh, glass noodle, which I love, or plain rice. So that is my Korean beef, nice and easy. Now I gotta clean. When I am cooking in the kitchen or eating or wanting to take a break from life, I love to watch TV, movies, stream all of the services, and one of my favorites is Acorn TV. Thank you to them for sponsoring today's freezer meal video. Don't speed up just yet. They're gonna give you an amazing deal, so hang on and listen for it. Acorn TV is the largest commercial-free British streaming service that features stories, premieres, originals you will not find anywhere else. Will Acorn TV work on all of your favorite streaming devices? Yes, in fact, it will. It will work on the following. Apple and Android, Fire TV, Google Chromecast, Roku, all of your smart TVs, and more. You can get thousands of hours of content on Acorn TV for the price of $6.99 a month, but hang on, they're gonna give you a deal. You can try Acorn TV for free for 30 days. That's an entire month. All you have to do is go to acorn.tv and use the code FFM, all lowercase please, first link down below to get that deal. 30 days for free, try it out, see if you like it. If you don't know what to watch, here's a recommendation. You can go check out Conviction, the case of Stephen Lawrence. It is an Acorn TV original mini series that premiered in February based on a true story, one of my favorite type of series. In April, 1993, 18 year old Stephen Lawrence was murdered and 13 years later, Detective Chief Inspector Clive Driscoll reopens the case. And I can't tell you what else is gonna happen. You're gonna have to go check it out for yourself. And if you find any show with David Tennant in it, I highly recommend you go watch that. He is one of my all time favorites. What's the free deal again? So glad you asked. Acorn.tv code, all lowercase, FFM. First link down below. Thank you to Acorn TV. And let's go get back to more freezer meal prep. The first thing we need to do for our jalapeno chicken casserole is to cook our pasta and cook our chicken. So I have two chicken breasts cooking right now and let's dump our pasta in our boiling water. You can use whatever pasta you want. Woo! Oh. <laughs> I have this fun curly cue pasta that I got in bulk. I just weighed out one pound. Bow tie is fine. Anything that can hold a creamy sauce would be a nice pasta to use. So we'll just cook this until it is almost cooked through. Very al dente. For the sauce for this casserole, I have in a saucepan eight ounces of cream cheese diced up a little bit, a cup and a half of milk, and one cup of chicken broth. And move this over to the stove, heat it up for a few minutes. We're just heating this up until it all comes together and this cream cheese melts. So not too high, we don't wanna curdle the milk here. This is your standard sheet pan. I get these in bulk from Sam's Club. They come with lids, very inexpensive. I have my totally cooked pasta, two cups of cooked chicken, one diced up jalapeno. I took the seeds out so it wasn't so bad, but if you're a little gutsy, you know, you can leave the seeds in, you can do more. I also like to live dangerously. And on top of this, we'll add our cheese sauce. Now that our sauce is smooth, two cups of Monterey Jack cheese. I'm using the baggie because it's easier. Melt that in and our sauce is done. Sauce time. Oh yeah. What is it about cream cheese sauces that are so great? Stir all this together. Any extra liquid, don't worry, the pasta will soak that up as it freezes and thaws and cooks again. So on top of this, sprinkle a little bit of cheese. I have cheddar this time. Are you even cooking if you don't spill it on the counter? That's the way you know you're really into what you're doing. I'm gonna do some bacon bits. You can do your own bacon, but <laughs> this is so much easier, isn't it? You know that bacon that's like maple? Got maple flavor. The maple kind, yeah. And I've had these breadcrumbs sitting in my cabinet, like in my pantry, forever. So we are finally 
finally using up the rest of this. That feels so good to finish up the breadcrumbs, right? You don't have to put breadcrumbs, but it just feels right, you know? That's it, this is all that is. <laughs> Now I can put my lid on and put my cooking instructions for this jalapeno chicken casserole. And if you love jalapenos, you can of course top it with some extras. Cooking instructions are to thaw all the way and then bake at 350 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes, or you can cook from frozen for about an hour and a half, keep it covered most of the time until the last uh, 20 minutes. This freezer meal is an Italian tortellini soup with a spicy sausage. The only prep we really need to do here is to brown our sausage and cook our onion together. Everything else just gets added in and dumped in some freezer bags. I like using the Jimmy Dean hot sausage because it already adds some crushed red pepper flakes in here, uh, which is part of the recipe if you're not using like a spicy sausage. You could also use just your regular sweet Italian sausage if you don't like spice. And also, uh, this was on sale. So, <laughs> browning up the sausage. Now, onions about to hit the pan. I love that sound, it sounds like they're cheering. Onions are in, so we're gonna go a few more minutes just until they're translucent. It is translucent in the sun. I have my bag and I wrote on here what it is and any instructions. So in this one, we're just gonna add two extra cups of water. And I, I like to stick them in uh, pitchers. I find they're super sturdy that way. My bag goes over this pitcher just like this, nice and easy. And you only need about half of a bag like this, so it's actually a great recipe to double. And I mean, if you're gonna make a freezer meal, this isn't making two for the effort of one just makes sense, does to me. So here come our tortellinis. This is the cheese one, but you can use whichever one you want. Some garlic, you could do powder or this. It's actually a good amount. Uh, a tablespoon or so. You can do a, one can of diced tomatoes, but I have these home canned uh, crushed tomatoes that I'm gonna be using today. Your favorite canned tomato product, just one can. Next up is about five ounces of spinach. You can do canned, you can do frozen, you can do fresh, it kind of really doesn't matter. This is a frozen one that I thawed just a little bit so I could get it in the back nicely, mostly because I don't even know why I bought this, but it was just hanging out in my freezer for who knows how long. Excellent way to use this up. Sausage and onion mixture is next, and I kind of hurt my wrist, so I don't know how well I can hold this pan like this. Okay, that's not bad. Okay, fast forward to when it's all in. <laughs> a teaspoon and a half of Italian seasoning and a half a teaspoon of pepper. Or if you did use the spicy sausage, you don't have to add this part. Crushed red pepper flakes, if you like. I already have the spicy sausage, so I'm gonna skip that this time. And one quart of chicken broth. So I have this one that I got on clearance from a discount store, which was amazing because this uh, this brand at Costco is very expensive. You might need to jimmy it a little to get it all in there. Here, I'm gonna just pull this out. There we go. There we go. I'm gonna add this whole bag and see if it'll all fit. I have it, so why not? If you notice, I put on here Add two cups of water when it's time to reheat. Let's go ahead and seal that, lay it flat, and stick it in the freezer. To reheat, all you have to do is pour it in a pot, put it in your Instant Pot, Crock Pot, whatever, and just heat it through and you're done. For our stuffed taco shells, I have a pound and a half of ground beef in here that I browned with nothing in it. There's nothing else in here. And we'll add a few more ingredients. I have five ounces of cream cheese, a tablespoon of chili powder. I, of course, will eyeball that. That looks close-ish. And a nice drizzle of taco sauce. I'll do about half this bottle. My hands are a little slippery, so, okay, that's not working. <laughs> oh no. Slippery little suckers. There we go. Okay, we'll just kind of melt all this together until it makes this nice sauce that we will use to fill our jumbo pasta shells that I already cooked and drained and rinsed with cold water. I used an entire pound box. So hopefully our measurements are close here. Once everything is combined, it looks pretty smooth. It's time to sprinkle in some cheese. You can do a Mexican blend. I just have this sharp cheddar that I'm gonna use about 
a half a cup or so. Stir all that in and we are ready to put the whole thing together. I have a greased freezer meal pan and my taco shells, these are cool, so I'm not gonna burn my fingers, and a one tablespoon scooper. So I will heap it up a little bit and fill them about, about like that and layer them in here. So here we go. How cute are these? Okay, now that we're at this stage, all we're gonna do is top with our remaining taco sauce, a little sprinkle of cheese right there on top. And we are done. Go ahead and freeze that. And then when it's time to cook, 350 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. If it is thawed, if it is not thawed, it's gonna be closer to an hour and a half. All these recipes were huge hits with my family. And all of those recipes will be down below if you wanna get that deal from Acorn TV. It's the first link in the doobly-doo if you wanna go check that out and try them out for free using my link. Thanks for hanging out. Happy cooking. And I hope you have a great day. Bye. Not on purpose. I mean, no, I was trying. To... No. <laughs> I mean, no. I... No. <laughs>